So welcome to the Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. I would like to thank all our viewers and members supporting this noble cause of Treasury Elite, networking, knowledge sharing, and mentoring. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek Goenka, founder and CEO of IFA Global and Treasury Elite. We bring in world-class foreign exchange, treasury, and financial transformation for companies across India over the last 15 years. Today, we have the CC Parthipan, Chairman, Kaplan Point Labs Limited. So Parthipan is a first-generation entrepreneur. Very humble beginnings and now run one of the fastest growing pharmaceutical companies in South India. Selling his products to little known places right from Latin America and developed markets like US and many other countries. Among various accolades and awards, Kaplan was listed in the Forbes Asia 200 Best Under a Billion for three years in a row. It was the only pharma company to be featured on the list in 14, 15 and 16. Business Today also ranked Kaplan Point as one of the top 500 most valuable companies was also rated as the best emerging company by ET 2018. Welcome, Mr. Parthipan. How are you doing today? Thank you. Fine. Thank you very much. Glad to have you today as a part of our Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. In the next 35 minutes, we would love to learn from your experience. So my first question to you, sir, when I talk to a lot of global CEOs, you know, there's one common thread that after a certain point of time in life and in business, uh, they are just not doing this for the money. I would like to ask you one single biggest reason for you to get out of bed every morning and get yourself to work. What is it that drives you today? The single biggest reason or one thing definitely is the passion for excellence in creating a legacy of making money with respect. It's not easy to see any strong man without an easy, with an easy past. It's not easy. Yes, that's the reason actually most of the entrepreneurs, especially the first generation one, had a tough beginning, then they had the courage and perseverance actually to make it big. And easy money does not teach you anything. What you have earned and what you have learned and how you have earned and what kind of a legacy what you want to leave for the company and the family, that really matters. And the legacy will live beyond our life. And the power of why is about your thinking. If you are a low thinker, it leads to low level life. Thinking probably is the ancestor to your language, action, and belief. There was a time I used to be poor. That's mainly because of the language that I actually used and the belief system which I had. After a point of time, I have developed the habit of reading books. That has upgraded my thinking, action, and belief, and life changed. There is no point in following the vast majority of people who think actually in the form of, I would say, a spurious thinking. And the physical distancing is not only needed for COVID-19, the physical distancing is also needed for people who really want to think big. They have to physically distance themselves from the spurious thinkers. It's time that we have to think of our thinking and question the essence of our belief. And the positive thinking and the positive action and the positive beliefs will alone pave the way for peace and prosperity for future. Probably I would consider this as the new normal for future life and business. So, of course, I completely agree with you that how you think, thoughts you create in your mind is ultimately what your actions are and actions decide your destiny and the future. Very well said by Mahatma Gandhi also. As we all know that you had a very humble beginning and uh, love to know a little bit about some of the major milestones your journey over the last 20, 25, 30 years? Yeah. I'm a product of a straightened circumstances. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm from a village which back in uh, the later 70s, I came to Chennai with 10 rupees and a bag full of rice looking for a job. I used to stay in a person who used to work in a printing press. And then I used to go to each and every place for a job. That's how I got my first job in an electronic shop. The first job, the salary of the first job was 125 rupees. Then I moved to a bookshop that was 150 rupees. Like that, I moved to various places. It was more of a roller coaster journey. Finally, I landed in a pharmaceutical company as a medical representative. After a few years, then, of course, I, I developed the idea of starting something of my own. I didn't have much money. I kept on talking to a couple of people. I was there to start actually a business in pharmaceutical. It's small investment. 
one of my friend told me that you can go for a protein tonic for which you don't need a huge investment i just checked with him he said if you have 5000 rupees that's enough you can even start this product on a loan license basis with any manufacturer who is into pharmaceuticals then i pledged my uh, wife's jewels and raised some 5000 rupees that's how i started actually a company called darwin pharmaceutical and that's where i used to manufacture one protein tonic those days for protein tonic there was so no need of a pharmaceutical license you only need a, a food license with that i started later you know what our money i earned actually uh, along with two more partners we started a partnership company then we moved on to kaplan point in 1990 as a private limited company the name kaplan point is uh, coined this way cap for capsule L for liquid, I N for injection, P for powder, O N for ointment, T for tablet. That's how we kind. Initially had uh, small sections with uh, semi-automatic machineries. Then 1994 we convert, 93 we converted this company as a public company and approached the public. And we did a good job in terms of public issue marketing. And ours even today is the maximum subscribed public issue in India, 117 times. what has happened between 94 and 98 uh, like any other first generation entrepreneur we didn't do the right balance between consolidation and expansion and failed very miserably then uh, i just led to a stage where i was not even in a position to pay school fees to my son also and it became very miserable and the failure strikes some you know, of there are only two options one is you have to have extraordinary technology or marketing to turn around or you have to have the courage to go to places where most people fear to go i took the road less traveled the second one that's how i went to the toughest parts of africa initially in fact i i was the first company i was the first one actually to start a pharmaceutical business in the parallel markets of guinea and most of our predecessors mainly still mainly the indians who used to sell medicines in west africa they used to stay in english colonies because the culture and language everything was easier so people who used to sell medicines in guinea they used to supply medicines either from sierra leone which is a english speaking country or from liberia and i was the first one to enter there there were a lot of challenges uh, it was more of a physical risk some of no the situation was either you die one day or you have to die every day so i prefer actually you know Uh, to go for the physical risk and initially when i started doing well people who were in the nearby uh, areas could sense that there is an opportunity and they could also follow when a lot of people came actually the market was flooded with competition generic business is based on the supply and demand if the supply is more automatically the price goes down then i moved actually from that country to various toughest parts like chad and niger and then i even went to somalia when there was no government and uh, airport the helicopters from nairobi used to carry a herb which was used by the muslim gentlemen in some parts of somalia and others i have went and met actually the pilot of on helicopter he said there is nothing in the form of chair or a toilet then i said okay you know i'm ready in spite of it and uh, a place which can be covered in one hour so uh, it took 3 and a half hours to reach i was uh, in fact i took another gentleman since i didn't speak the local language of somalia i told a person from nairobi that i would pay him some uh, 50 per day he also came with me and we both went there and the helicopter landed on the uh, coast like uh, that's how you know they do as we came out of the helicopter we could see lot of people carrying actually the guns on the shoulder the gentleman who came with me started telling me are for 50 dollars no i made a mistake of coming with you probably i'll get killed here i said no 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 don't worry if you get killed i'll also be killed let us be you know our city will go then i went with this one or two people we spoke to them in english and the one of course spoke in alhamri that my man who came with me he spoke to him then they took us to a hotel which was the dilapidated hotel that was the only hotel actually at that point of time they told us stay inside don't come out actually after this is already 4:30 the next day we will come and take 
take you actually to the market. And next day they came. When we went to the market, I could see the houses, entire houses which I saw was riddled with bullet holes. And unfortunate part of the trip is when I went there, I could see <coughs> products. Most of the products that are sold in that country were substandard. The reason is how I could understand is because of the fact it was sold at a much lower price, which is less than my manufacturing cost. Then I moved from that country to Somaliland. I did some this during a civil war. Uh, the second day of my traveling in the city to understand uh, how exactly the market actually is, was the day, you know, I had an encounter with the bandits. The car was actually following us, which I didn't know. By the time it became 6.30, it was dark and we were coming in actually a lane and the car, the car overtook us and started shooting the tire. And then uh, I could sense their bandits. Immediately, the moment they put the gun on my head, I gave the briefcase to them. And they started shooting in the air, which means, you know, you're not supposed to stand there. Because they are also equally scared. Uh, they have to run. They have to take everything and run. And luckily, 30, 40 minutes before that incident, I took my passport and that $500 which I had and I put it in the jacket. So uh, it was a shock and uh, I came to the hotel and I just told to a friend of mine who was even now is our uh, advisor in some areas. The gentleman said, you leave the country immediately. I said, no, no, this is the country which is going to change my fortune, I told him. He said, no, no, why you have to take a risk? No, that's the only way to turn around my business, I said. And at that time, there was one local guy who was into pharmaceutical business. He was also with me in the car. He didn't come the next day. After two days, he came to the hotel. He started asking me, when are you going to Chennai? I said, why do you want to pack me up? No, no, you would have been killed the other day. Do you want to still stay and do something here? I said, if you would have been killed, we would not be talking with each other now. That means there is something, you know, written actually in the form of that we will do well here. But he said, no, 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 it's very tough. I told him there is another market which is the toughest in the country. Uh, he said, no, 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 even the locals like us, we won't go there. I won't, I won't do this and he left. I know he would come back. So the next day he came back. He started telling me like, you know, we have to go with the police. He will not come in the dress. He will not come with the uniform. Still, he will come with us. And this is what we have to do. We have to give some money. And then I said, I agreed and went there. When we went to that market, I've seen that market is the market which is going to turn around my business. The reason is the prices at which actually it was sold at that point of time is something similar to the prices which I see in the regulated markets today. Because this country was the second largest oil producer of uh, Africa, Angola. And due to civil war, there were not many people who really ventured into this part of the world. Then uh, this guy, I asked him, you know, can you connect me to some restaurants? He asked me why, because this is a place since I don't have any networking advantage. It's not going to be easy for me to start a business. I need to understand someone. And then he connected me to some people, but most of the restaurants, I told them, I would like to start an Indian restaurant here. If you want, I'll bring the cook and you don't have to pay anything to me. The idea of doing this one is to only, you know, understand who are the Indian and actually, you know, like Mozambique Indians, British Indian, Portuguese Indians who are into pharmaceutical business. But uh, most of the restaurants said, no, finally one guy, why come as a partner? I'm already bleeding. You can take this on lease, he said. Then I took that place on lease. By the time, you know, I didn't have much money. I told him, trust me, I'll go and send the advance to you. Give me the hotel uh, uh, bank details. That's how I collected everything, came back. I had only one small property, one small land. That was the only thing left out without even telling my family I pledged that property. I moved one container of actually cutleries and crackeries from Indonesia, one container of cereals. And you know, I used to be in the restaurant before I joined the pharmaceutical uh, industry. So I have some exposure. So I spoke to a friend of mine who was a good cook, actually, Moglai. I told him I'll give you 10% in this restaurant, which I'm going to start in uh, this place. He joined me. We went there. We went with a good inaugural invitation and told and met a lot of people who were into the pharmaceutical industry and also invited a minister to open this restaurant. The name of the restaurant was Taj Mahal. 
he told to these people when you come on the first day food and beer will be served free when you say free you know people always come actually <laughs> that too you know it's a new food and all and uh, it was a very good actually you know crowd and overnight people have come to know that there is an indian who started in an indian restaurant and i started taking the orders in the restaurant and the purpose of my taking the order is to understand who are all coming to my restaurant after a weeks time i met one guy he is a portuguese indian and i asked him what type of business you are into he said yeah, he is into pharmaceuticals i told him i have a pharmaceutical company then he started telling you are pulling a fast one you seem to be a steward taking orders i said no 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 i am the owner of this restaurant probably you were not here one week ago otherwise you would have also attended the function no which i in fact i invited a lot of people here for the inauguration for which he said true true three days back only i came from portugal he said then i brought my brochures company brochures showed it everything to him then the person who said actually of pulling the fast one he said hey it's an intelligent thinking he said i even told my father we should go to india or china the prices are very good you know we can buy the products then my father said go to india they are okay they are all i used to be an indian but you should understand this story they will show you some sample when it comes to the export of products actually they'll export to some junk you and we'll go to jail i said no 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 not that thing will happen to you that way this is my restaurant you don't have to give me the entire money give me 10 or 15 percent as i want advance and rest of the products i'll bring and you test the quality if you are satisfied with the product then you pay me i said so this is a good arrangement that's how it has happened that we really make sure of my entire investment i got the entire investment of the restaurant from that one transaction then i was the first indian to open a warehouse in the country every two months i used to go there stay two months i used to sell medicines i uh, myself used to sell and there was one boy today he used to be a tea boy in my company one of the boys whom i love a lot because because of his hard work and love to us me and the company i i in fact developed him and i put him in angola along with me he used to work in the uh, veros used to sell 50 60000 dollar business cash business with a profit of 50 to 60 percent those days and uh, life was tough but that's the country which in the fortune by the time you know my elder son completed his degree then i took him actually to caribbean first dominican republic later i moved into central america then two years from then you know my second son completed his degree i took him to china one for the marketing other one for sourcing the purpose of taking my second son is to make sure that you know i can export the formulations from there of products which are not cheaper in india even today many products especially uh you are uh, cephalosporin and penicillin are cheaper in india in exporting those products as finished formulations from china to south america my elder son of course has been taking care of uh, my marketing there i used to work until 4 years ago i used to work in the market also now we have spread our tentacles to various countries 10 to 12 countries on top of this i did one thing in the form of selecting people from the poor family and the major qualification is that he should actually speak to only tamil not necessary to speak even english also i put them actually in a spanish class here and then most of the people like we i have around 28 to 29 people working in central america there are around 500 locals working today and 85% of our business comes from latin america i would say this 28 to 29 people are the one who brought the company along with my sons where it is today yes please it's a very very exciting journey i think uh, that's where power of an entrepreneur comes where he is just traveling into uncharted territory without even knowing that he another day or not and then first has its way to him the way suddenly once after 25 30 years you actually reflect and see that how that one restaurant changed the entire scope of the business i strongly feel that uh, business or in life you know you not get success until unless you are conscious of your thoughts have a crystal clear vision and be extremely flexible like you mentioned and nimble like a palm tree what are your three major learnings from your spiritual and leadership journey over the last many years and how do entrepreneurs deal with yes. emotions like failure regret self doubt 
I'm sure you would have witnessed all of these in your journey. See, I would say the three major learnings to tell you the first one, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And if you have that courage and perseverance, one man with courage is a majority. The second language, sorry, second uh, learning probably is the organization is a reflection of a promoter's energy. The third one probably is to remain positive even in a negative situation that alone can take you to the next orbit. These are the major uh, learnings and uh, some of the milestones I would say during the first phase, the milestone is uh, the 117 times over subscription. But the major milestone I would say in all humility is the turnaround, ours is a turnaround story. You don't see many turnaround stories in the history of the corporates. When the company goes sick, you know what happens actually in the system. And uh, in fact, there was a time the share went to 10 rupee share went to 1 rupee 50 paisa. And uh, the account became an NP. I didn't want to actually leave it like that. I felt this is not the life which I really want. That's the reason I told you what is important is the creation of a legacy in the form of making money with respect. Sir, you were mentioning about uh, that you were hiring Tamils and you were training them in Spanish. You want simple people to work with you. In business, you need leaders. How do you keep a balance between entrepreneurship and professional management? And what are the traits of people you observe when you hire? How do you make a world-class leadership team? The entrepreneur needs a balance between empathy and uh, the skill sets in the form of, you know, talent and other things which is needed to run an enterprise effectively. The first thing, having worked as an employee, I understand how exactly I have to treat an employee the way I want to be treated. That gives me like uh, a kind of uh, attitude which I need. At the same time, I also expect the attitude which the employee needs in, the, in addition to that is that uh, reskilling and upskilling, which is definitely needed for uh, people as we grow actually in our journey. And as far as our company is concerned today, we offer ESA, which is something very unique because most of the companies offer ESA in a different way. We offer actually at the par value. Today, our share is quoting at 500 rupees, it's around 500 rupees. We offer it for two rupees to people who contribute and who are sure of contributing it. That's one set of people. The second set of people whom I have, they are good people and they've been with us loyal. And uh, we are also, we have to make sure that, you know, how exactly to educate them in the form of reskilling and upskilling for them to get to the next level. So what is needed is a balance between these two and the creation of a culture. Being a pharmaceutical company, the most important factor is the creation of culture in terms of integrity and quality. And you are aware that uh, I think it's Peter Ducker who once said, culture is strategy for breakfast. breakfast. So, so everything revolves around culture. The creation of a culture will make all the difference for the success of a business. Sir, uh, my last question to you. How is the pharmaceutical industry in India shaping uh, lately? And any thoughts on what best practices India should adopt? Any ideas from the modern world? Yeah. What is happening today, as you are aware, 65 to 70 percent of our API comes from a country with whom we have some issues today. And not only us, you know, many of the countries have these challenges. So the best way is to eliminate the dependence. And the government of India also has come up with attractive schemes in the form of PLI and other things to manufacture our own APIs. And uh, in any business, Today, whatever little or whatever actually we are today is because of the business model differentiation that we have created in Central America. We first went as a manufacturer, then we started actually controlling the importing company, non-importing company. Today, we not only manufacture and export, we also import, we do the distribution and go for the last mile too. That way, we have eliminated the intermediaries. This has become a end-to-end -end company. So for any pharmaceutical company, there are two things which are very important, technology and marketing. And coming to technology, the best technology part platform should be as follows. 
you have to start your own key starting material then go for the intermediates and go for the api and go for your own formulation and then if you are in a position to actually get into the private market and create an end to end business model there or else even if you are not into actually private market if you have the capability to go for end to end technology then you become cost effective in tenders also that's how the big companies have become big today so what is important for most of the pharmaceutical company is not for the companies who have really gone big is for the companies which are in the process of growing like us how to think of an end to end model not only for marketing but also for the technology probably this is the best way forward so one fun fact about you what people did not know as i told you before i studied everything in tamil medium so when i came to chennai i didn't even know the difference between situation vacant and the situation required situation required is for the job seeker so i started applying actually for a job to the job seeker house and those days there was nothing in the form of email and all the job seeker the job uh, seeker you know used a postcard and wrote to me back i myself i am an unemployed how on the earth i'll be able to give you a job yes written no then i felt no i should only go for actually a situation why can not to the situation required that's how i started my actually you know beginning in chennai that's lovely and in fact it was a very very candid conversation with you i thoroughly enjoyed hearing about your africa journey how going broke turning around the entire business getting into new types of business getting uh, relevant people into the entire mastermind concept building the culture and then sustaining the business and Manipur. Now I think uh, thoroughly enjoyed talking about how you built up teams. How you, while talking to you, there was a lot of humility. I could also sense thoroughly enjoyed conversation. I personally learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking out time. Thank you so much.